the recording right now. Okay, thank you. <clears throat> hey, good evening, everybody. Welcome to uh, Data 650. Um, <clears throat> Uh, this is the summer session. It's the official start date is today, uh, May 21st, and uh, the course continues till August 12th. Um, so the purpose of this section, this uh, lecture, is to uh, introduce you to the course uh, schedule uh, and uh, define some terms. Um, specifically clear up what we mean by big data, and uh, also to go over uh, the assignments and, uh, uh, you know, how, how the assignments and tutorials. Uh, we will also uh, look at the expectations um, and how to uh, actually navigate through the course. Um, and uh, we will discuss the grading scheme also, okay? Uh, I'll also talk about the uh, IBM platform and the other tools and uh, techniques that we will be using throughout this course. Can everybody hear me? If anybody has a problem, can you send an email? to our chat message. Can you send a chat message to everyone? Raise your hand. We can okay. hear you. I assume. We can hear you. Yeah. I guess, okay, I assume everybody can hear me. All right, so first introduction. Um, unfortunately, Dr. Elena Gocheva is not with us. Uh, today, she is in China uh, for the Watson uh, competition, she's going to be there for a couple of weeks. Um, you know, she is, uh, I will be co-teaching this course with uh, Dr. Gocheva. She, she, is all, she is the program chair, uh, as you probably know, for data, uh, for, uh, data science and analytics. And uh, she also co-teaches this course uh, the way it's going to work is I'll be teaching the first half of uh, the course, and then uh, we will be sharing some of the teaching in the second half of the course, okay? Uh, I will be covering, uh, for the most part, the Hadoop ecosystem, um, and also uh, Spark, and uh, <clears throat> we will be doing uh, assignments using Spark ML, um, and then uh, we will move on to the second part of the course. Uh, very briefly, I'm a, I've, I've been doing data science and decision sciences for almost 20 years now. Uh, this is the third semester I am teaching this course, uh, or co-teaching this course with uh, Dr. Gorcheva. Um, and, um, you know, I'm, I've already introduced myself in the discussions, so I am uh, requesting everybody to go to the discussions forums uh, and introduce yourself. Uh, I've already seen uh, many of your posts and responded to uh, most of them. Um, <clears throat> if you have any questions, um, any issues, uh, do not hesitate to email me or um, post questions if they are of general interest uh, on the discussion forums. Uh, Elena and uh, Linesh are the TAs uh, of this course for the two sections. Uh, I will let Elena introduce herself. Elena, do you want to go? Yes, sure. Uh, good evening, everybody. So I'm um, Elena, and I have been in this program for a very long time and in fact I've been here since this course has been taught for the first time all right so and uh, I guess I may have met some of you already in your data 610 course or in, in data 630 course right 
So I look forward to work with you again if I worked with you before. If I have not worked with you before, I look for, I, I'm glad to meet you. All right? Linish, I guess? Sure. Yeah, Linish, can you introduce yourself here? Sure, yeah. So good evening and welcome to um, Data 650 course, everyone. So once again, I'm Linesh Dave, and um, you know we'll be your TA and, and I'll partner with Yelena. And especially if you're in 90, uh, 9040 and 2185 section of the class, so you, you'll find me you know, trying to help you with your you know, technical questions, if any. Um, as as um, uh, Gopati has mentioned, and as also, you know, um, I've also put up in my introduction, um, I'm one of the former students of this program. So let me tell you that, you know, Data 650 um, is, is a precursor to your last Data 670 course. So as such, you know, use it to your advantage to learn as much as possible. This is a very fast-paced course. I'm sure you know, that, uh, Dr. Gopati and Dr. Gorcheva would definitely mention that over and over again, but this is very fast-paced course, guys. And um, you know, there's no silver bullet, no magic bullet to, for you know, being successful in this course. The only way to be successful is it to kind of read all your weekly material on time, and start your assignments as soon as possible. You know, do not wait for the last minute or the last weekend. Okay, so that that will be my only advice and suggestion. And and uh, just telling you from my personal experience taking this course not too long ago. Okay, so with that, you know, good luck to you all, and I look forward to you know working with you. All right, thank you. Okay. Um... I have to say that both Elena and Linesh are excellent TAs. They are very dedicated. Um, they have been, uh, you know, working um, through the assignments and uh, most of the course material for more than a month now. Um, they have been preparing all the course syllabus, putting together reading materials and the lectures and also uh, the assignments. And uh, once the course starts and we start moving fast, um, they are always available to help you. So please make sure that you take their help as needed. Um, you know, do not, as Linus said, do not wait till the last minute to get started on the assignments. Um, remember, there are uh, 50 of you, almost 50 of you. So if everybody, um, you know, is in a rush to get started and finish um, the Sunday that the assignment is due, uh, it's going to be a problem. Okay, so uh, get started early and uh, please post questions on the discussion forums and uh, email me or Elena or Linish, okay? Okay, so introductions are over. I will uh, quickly walk through the outline of the course. We will look at the grading scheme, and then we will look at how uh, you know, you, you need to navigate the course in order to be successful, um, and then we will briefly look at week one activities, okay? So first, let's start with some definitions. Uh, you probably have heard uh, the uh, phrase big data quite a bit. Uh, there are lots of confusing uh, and sometimes even contradicting uh, definitions or explanations of the terms big data. So for this course, we are going to define big data in a very specific manner, okay? So simply put, big data are data sets that grow so large that they become awkward and difficult to work with using hands-on database management tools, okay? Uh, it's just data that will not fit into Excel sheet or even is uh, into RDBMS, and uh, it does not 
easily it is it cannot be data that cannot be easily manipulated using those tools okay um moreover by big data we mean not just structured data but also uh, everything including uh, you know uh, text images videos audio uh, etc okay so there is a lot of difficulty in capturing and storing searching analyzing and visualizing big data okay uh, it really requires new data architectures and uh, analytical tools it also needs new analytical methods so if you are thinking about you know um, the methods that are typically available on maybe excel such as fitting a linear uh, equation that is doing linear regression or fitting a polynomial you know those kind of methods are going to be uh, very difficult to use uh, directly on big data okay so we have to develop new analytical methods uh, for making sense of and interpreting uh, big data so um just a brief uh history and uh, you know on the volume of big data okay so you know it, it, the volume of data uh has increased more than 40 fold from 2009 till 2020 it's a, it's, it's expected to continue to increase at an exponential rate um we used to measure data volume in um, you know gigabytes and terabytes and then around 2009 uh, 10 we had to move to zettabytes and uh, we expect the volume to continue to increase okay uh, apart from the volume you also have processing complexity um that's i mentioned that you know big data also includes um unstructured data like videos and audio as well as images so it takes a lot of uh, it you know you cannot use your traditional methods to analyze those kinds of data okay so that's the uh, variety so here is a short schematic okay you can see in the 1990s we were able to handle uh, most of the data uh, with either oracle or sap uh, relational database management systems um, and then um, also uh, teradata uh, which is all uh, which is a data warehousing tool used to store uh, several terabytes of data okay so that's about 1000 gbs and then in the 2000s we had uh, other uh, you know in addition to the structured data we also had images and textual documents uh, and uh, you know other uh, unstructured documents and the size grew to uh, more than 1000 terabytes which is 1 petabyte okay and now uh, we are actually in the exabyte uh, region okay so this includes uh, a lot of uh, genomic information or genomic data you know all kinds of uh, um, social media data including twitter messages sms messages uh youtube videos medical images and so on and and also geo data okay the size of these uh data um easily extend into uh thousands of petabytes which we call uh, an exabyte okay so that's this briefly uh the scale and volume of the uh of big data okay now here is a view of uh, the different types of data that we will be dealing with 
at the bottom you see uh, unstructured data okay this is uh, this includes text documents pdfs images videos essentially there is no uh, structure to them okay uh, <clears throat> and then you have semi structured data and these are um, data that are stored in certain schematic formats so for example uh, xml files or json files um, okay they organize um, in a gross manner uh, some unstructured data so for example a json file can include say, a lot of textual data okay so that is semi structured now in between unstructured and semi structured you could have um, what is known as quasi structured okay uh, these are essentially uh, semi structured data that are noisy okay they are mis missing some of the structures that we try to impose on the data so those are called quasi structured data and of course the easiest type of data to deal with are structured data which can be nicely stored in relational databases and you can have uh, oltp or olap systems um for either transactions or for reporting and um, many of you are familiar with um this type of data as well as uh, the systems that allow you to store and analyze uh, that type of data the structured data okay now <clears throat> so here are some more ex some examples so you get structured data which uh, can be stored very nicely in tabular format you got semi structured data which has uh you know for example in a html web page or a html source is a semi structured data okay it contains different uh, um, field definitions uh you know and um, and within each field definition you have uh, the value for that field okay so that's what we call semi structured data if you are familiar with xml or json um those files also look the same and they are all classified as semi structured data okay and unstructured data of course could be anything from you know free form text to videos and audios and um on the top right uh, you see quasi structured data which is uh, essentially uh structured data semi structured data that is a little bit noisy okay it may be missing a field or uh, it may be missing values and things like that all right <clears throat> so i want to make a very very important point okay if you uh, you there is one thing that you need to take away from this lecture it is this okay so let me define data science for you first so data science as you can see from this slide is an interdisciplinary field that applies the scientific method to solve challenging problems by mining heterogeneous data of uncertain provenance and quality okay i will decipher each one of those uh, underlying phrases for you so you see there are three groups of things uh you know that i have uh, three groups or three phrases that i have underlined here okay the first one is the scientific method the second one refers to challenging business problems um of uncertain provenance and quality okay so that's what i was uh, referring to as semi structured or quasi structured data okay um so w w we don't know where the data come from and we don't know how well the data have been curated or how well they have been organized we have essentially we get lots of noisy data okay so you can imagine um you know twitter feeds or um a whole bunch of uh, facebook or instagram posts you know people type um yeah you know, using shortcut you know using 
shortcuts, they use acronyms, um, the sentences are not properly formatted, they are not grammatical, grammatically correct, there are spelling errors, and um, you know, you find all kinds of noisiness in the data. Okay, so that's what we mean by data of uncertain provenance and quality. And of course, heterogeneous means, um, you know, they're of a variety of different, they come from a variety of different sources and have different formats. For example, you know, videos or audios and so on. So, uh, you can think of this as the three main pillars of data science, or data analytics. The first one is the scientific method, which basically means you formulate a hypothesis, you do experiments, and you draw conclusions. Okay, you try to either, you try to reject the hypothesis, and um, you, you know, go back and start the experiment again if your uh, ideas don't pan out, okay? So that is, that is one of the main pillars of analytics. You don't uh, analyze data in a loose uh, or informal manner. For the most part, you will be sticking with the scientific method of interrogating and investing, investigating uh, the data, okay? And we know that the scientific method is very, very old. Okay, and then on the other extreme, uh, on the other side, we have advanced analysis and computing, and that includes tools such as statistics, machine learning, NLP, and AI. Okay, <clears throat> again, many of these uh, methods and tools and te techniques have been around for a long time. Okay, but in the middle, you have big data systems, you know, such as the Hadoop ecosystem, Spark, and the Hadoop eco ecosystem includes Hive and Hbase uh, uh, databases. There is Spark Streaming and the Kafka and Woozy and a whole bunch of other tools uh, that can be collectively called big data systems, okay? Um, historically, these tools were not available before the advent of big data. Okay, they were actually specifically developed to uh, work with big data, to manipulate big data and to analyze big data. So when, you, uh, when people say big data analytics, okay, they generally we mean that you will be using a scientific method and big data systems and applying either statistics uh, or machine learning, or NLP, or AI um, to manipulate and interpret the data. Okay, so all three are necessary. Okay, but the the main thing is that historically, um, the big data systems were developed to deal with large volumes of data, and the statistical algorithms and machine learning algorithms that we currently use to deal with big data, uh, you know, were also developed after the advent of big data. But that is not the only use of these systems, okay? That is the main point you need to remember, okay? Uh, the, 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 you know, the scientific method, of course, uh, goes across disciplines. A lot of people use um, the scientific approach in different ways, um, in different fields. But big data systems and the advanced analysis and computing that were developed uh, to deal with big data systems can also be used on data of any size, okay? So you should not be under the impression that you can only use, for example, Spark machine learning library, Spark ML, or uh, HBase for very large volume data, okay? That, that is their intended purpose, okay? That's, how, that's why they were developed. Those systems were developed to deal with m big volumes of data. But, you know, you can go um, across the country, you will find lots of uh, businesses using 
these big data systems to deal with their daily problems because the these systems have matured way beyond what they were developed for initially. Okay, for example, MapReduce was an old uh, was one of the first computing uh, methodologies for dealing with big data. Okay, now we don't use that at all, and it's uh, evolved into a more sophisticated, faster uh, methods and tools. And those tools can be used on data of any time. Okay, so to summarize, I guess what I'm trying to say here is that data science can stand alone without big data, okay? So do not expect to be working with petabytes of data or, you know, uh, zettabytes of data. That is not uh, the purpose of this course, okay? The purpose of this course is to teach you the big data systems and the big data tools, okay? So that will be the... Um, you know, uh, Hadoop ecosystem, as well as um, how to use uh, machine learning algorithms, NLP and AI uh, on those tools, okay? So it is gonna, so you have to try to separate these two things in your mind, okay? These are tools that are very powerful, can be used to work with, very large volumes of data, and you are going to learn how to use those tools. It does not mean that in every assignment and every tutorial, you are going to be given petabytes of data to work with, okay? That is an easy step, okay? The, the, the more difficult thing is to actually master these tools and techniques. So that will be the focus of this course, okay? The focus will be to make sure that you thoroughly understand how these tools work at the, on the back end and how you can use them um, in the front end, okay? So uh, let me pause here for a minute and see if there are any questions. Uh, you can send your questions to uh, everyone. Are there any questions, clarifications? So half, I guess what I'm trying to say is halfway through the course, um, don't feel like uh, you have not worked with big data, <laughs> simply because you have not been given uh, huge volumes of data to work with, okay? Uh, you're going to learn all the systems and the tools and techniques that will be useful to analyze and interpret big data. Okay, so moving on. Um, as you probably, if you have taken other courses, you know that this is um, a competency-based course. So what that means is that your grades will be based on what you can do and not what you know. You know, you may know a lot about HDFS, you know, the Hadoop distributed file system. But if you do not work with the tutorial that we give you and then extend it and apply the methods you have learned to solve a new problem, okay, which will usually be the assignment, then, you know, we, we have no idea, no way of knowing that you have really uh, mastered HDFS. So that's simply what it means. The graded assignments will be based on what you can do and not what you know. Okay, we will often give you skeleton uh, notebooks um, which will have uh, some, uh, which will have some piece of code in it and your task will be to develop on that, uh, develop that code to solve the problem you have chosen, okay? And when we rerun the notebook, it should produce uh, the expected results that you will be writing in your reports, okay? 
So um, that's what we mean by competency-based uh, grading, all right? Uh, and of course, you know that from other courses also. And there will be very few assignments. There are actually going to be four assignments, and there will be discussion topics in addition to the uh, four assignments. Uh, usually, the assignments are spaced uh, two weeks apart, okay? So you will have two whole weeks to uh, work on an assignment. However, there will be something due every week. And usually this will be the tu tutorials. The tutorials will be due between the assignments. And if there are no tutorials, then there will be lots of um, discussion prompts and questions that you will have to research and uh, post in the discussion forum, okay? So um, my suggestion is that as soon as uh, a new topic opens up, and many topics uh, extend over a two-week period um, to grab the reading material and get started with the assignment right away. If you have trouble logging into the IBM platform uh, or if you have trouble launching the uh, application, then um, contact me or the TAs immediately, okay? That's, that's really the... Uh, idea behind giving you two full weeks to work on the assignment. And then halfway through, you should be able to finish up the tutorial, and that should give you more confidence that you can deal with the assignment. All right, so the course material for, this, uh, for Data 650 um, was not chosen half as early. Um, uh, probably you have heard Dr. Gorchava say this before, uh, but the, there is an advisory board for uh, the UMUC uh, analytics program. Okay, and this uh, advisor, on this advisory board we have uh, companies like Lockheed Martin, uh, Booz Allen, and also. Um, the executive branch of the U.S. government, the Office of um, uh, the Scientific, Scientific Advisor to the President, uh, and, of course, IBM. So that's where the course material comes from. They uh, revise and advise us on uh, what new topics to include, um, and uh, uh, what kind of new approaches we can use to teach uh, big data, all right? Um, I also want to list all the wonderful achievements of past students uh, in the program. You can see here that people who have been through this program have won many awards. The latest one is uh, Louis Catty, Won the, he won the um, Audience Choice Award uh, at the IMF uh, Hackathon uh, just a couple of weeks back. All right, so here is the schedule. Uh, the course extends over 12 weeks. Um, the first week is introduction, okay? So that will be this week. And uh, you have two things you need to submit. Of course, you, you should take the pledge, and then um, you should be able to set up your IBM uh, academic account. Um, you should have attempted it by now. If not, I urge you to do it within uh, the next couple of days. If you have any, if you face any problems, uh, if you have previously been a student in the um, courses and, you know, you had the account for a while, it's possible that your account has expired by now, so you need to go through uh, certain steps to make sure that, um, you know, you can uh, reinstate your account, so all of that is going to take some time. Please don't do it um, towards the end of the second week when your first assignment is due, okay? So you need to, you need to get started on that right away. Uh, note that all assignments are due on Sunday night at 11.59 p.m. 
there is a penalty for late submission. 5% uh, of the grade will be deducted for every late day of submission. Okay. In the second week, uh, we will, you know, really start with big data analytics. So this is where uh, you will be introduced to the Hadoop uh, system, the Hadoop distributed file system, or HDFS. Uh, we will go th through and understand how Hadoop works at the back end. We will look at um, all the functional aspects of Hadoop. Um, I, will, I will also introduce you to the to MapReduce one, which is no longer in use, but still is conceptually uh, the uh, the the idea from which all the newer uh, techniques and tools such as Spark um, come, okay? So uh, the second week will be devoted to uh, HDFS, and we will be uh, looking at certain, um, uh, you know, uh, resource management and, uh, you know, other uh, configuration and other, other things related to Hadoop. Okay, the third week will be Apache Spark. Um, Spark is a cluster computing platform that, is, that can either be standalone or it can run on a distributed file system such as HDFS, okay? Um, so we will again study the internal details of how Spark works. We will look at uh, RDDs, the Resilient Distributed Databases, and um, operations on RDDs, okay? Now, at the end of the second week, uh, an assignment is due. That assignment is based on HBase, which is a columnar data store uh, on top of Hadoop, okay? Uh, so it is a store for unstructured data. Uh, again, um, I think we already have a lecture put up um, going into all the internal details of how uh, data is written into HBase and data are read from HBase, uh, how um, node failures um, are dealt with, and, um, you know, all kinds of details are already in the lectures. So you would, after studying all that, you will be able to uh, complete the HBase assignment. Okay, and um, and week four we will go over Spark SQL. Um, so here the data will be stored in data frames, and you can use um, you know basic SQL to query and transform uh, the data, you know big data um, stored in data frames. Um, weeks five and six will be machine learning, and uh, that will be a uh, one of the more uh, intense assignments. Um, it will be due uh, at the end of the sixth week. And then we will uh, move into uh, NLP, conversational AI, and um, sentiment analysis, okay? Um, so that is gonna be the second part of the course. It will be devoted to uh, you know, essentially NLP and artificial intelligence. So the first seventh week will be sentimental analysis, and then you will do in-memory analytics. Um, the assignment is gonna be due, the third assignment will be due at the end of the ninth week, and then we will continue to study uh, text analytics and NLP, uh, cognitive analytics, and the uh, last week uh, there will be a assignment uh, due, okay? So um, that is the schedule. And uh, actually, let me just go over, I should have, okay, let me go over the uh, weightage for the assignment. Uh, the HBase assignment, the one that's due due uh, the end of next week, has 15%. Uh, these tutorials don't carry that much weight because you are essentially learning from the uh, code that we give you. And then, uh, as you can see from here, the highest weighted assignment is assignment to Spark. So 
I strongly suggest that as soon as the uh, course material opens, uh, you get started. Okay, go through the reading materials, watch the lecture, and start with that assignment. Okay, and um, discussion participation is very important. Okay, you can. Uh, we have put up lots of prompts, and um, you know, try to answer as many prompts as possible. Do your own research. Engage your classmates, uh, and do not forget to answer any questions I post. Okay, so uh, it's not a secret. I'm gonna let you know that the difference between a B and an A is a detailed, uh, thoughtful, well-researched answer to my follow-up questions to your post. Okay. All right, so let's go back and um, uh, look at, um, let me see. Okay, so uh, what's the difference between a, the traditional approach to data analysis and big data analysis? Okay, in the traditional uh, view, you know, usually the business user uh, tells you what they want. Okay, they give you a set of requirements and the IT uh, person, the uh, you know, um, will do a bunch of uh, operations, some ETL and all kinds of querying and uh, reporting, and provide the answer back to the business users. Okay, in the big data world, it's a slight, it's a almost reversed. Okay, the IT uh, people are the big data analysts. Uh, the data scientist actually develops a lot of tools, okay? So you develop tools using big data systems and statistics or NLP, and the tools are made available to the business to explore the data on their own, okay? So a very good example is conversational AI. Uh, for example, you can develop a chatbot um, that uh, you know, so the, the way the chatbot works is you ask questions or you type in questions, uh, then uh, the questions are uh, filtered through a natural language understanding module, and there is a dialogue model that uh, generates the uh, responses. Along with the responses, you can also display a lot of uh, related data, okay? so. Uh, think about this. Uh, in the olden times, there were data on Excel sheets. And uh, if the business user uh, wanted to see a pivot table, you know, maybe uh, they do it themselves or they ask an IT person to pivot the data for them. And that's it. That is one view, okay, the pivot table. They look at the uh, numbers and they try to interpret uh, and make sense of them, okay? But a chatbot that has conversational AI in it, okay, is like a tool that gives them almost unlimited power to interrogate and investigate the data. They can ask the tool any question they want about the data. You know, they can say, what is the average of this? Or, you know, what was the, how many outliers are in this thing? Uh, you cannot, I mean, imagine all the work it will take to uh, develop the tools uh, to answer each one of those questions, you know, in the traditional approach. But now by developing this chatbot, which is conversational AI in it, uh, you are giving them very general uh, interrogative powers, okay? So that is the main difference. You are going to develop tools that the business users can use on their own and can and can function in an almost unlimited manner, okay? So um, that is the power of the big data uh, approach. So, and of course here uh, we are not talking about, you know, applications or uh, operating systems. Uh, we have software as a service and platform as a service, and our platform is the IBM Cloud. 
and the services we will be accessing from there are Big Insight uh, and also DB2 uh, and Apache Spark. Okay, um, and then we also have access to uh, Watson Cognitive and Data Science Experience, which are essentially uh, SaaS. Okay. So, do you have any questions on this? So, the platform we'll be using is the IBM Cloud Platform for the most part, and uh, IBM offers that as a service. So, each one of you will have an IBM account. You log in, okay, you get a little bit of the computational power of the entire cloud, okay, and then Within that container, you will have lots of different uh, software or applications that you can um, launch and uh, use, okay? So some of those services are, uh, for example, Spark or, um, you know, HBase, Big Table, and things like that. Are there any questions? Okay. So you probably heard that um, IBM Watson uh, beat the Jeopardy champion. This happened several years back. Um, so this is the same Watson platform, the same Watson engine that we will that you will be using. Okay, it has uh, internally it has three major modules. One is the NLP. Uh, the other is hypothesis generation, and then evidence-based learning. So whatever it misses in the first hit, uh, it eventually learns, okay? So uh, you will be doing uh, at least one assignment on um, the Watson uh, platform. Okay. Um, I think I already went in some detail over the assignments. The first assignment will be on HBase. Second one will be on uh, machine learning and Spark. Third will be sentimental analysis. And the fourth will be building chat chatbots using Watson Cognitive. Okay. All right. So grading. Um, if I mean, there's only one, one thing to know, okay? If your assignment meets the minimum requirement, okay, you submit it on time, okay, you have a well-written report and you have answered all the questions, then you will get a B, okay? If you, wanna, if you want an A, we expect much more than meeting the minimum requirements. Please be aware of this, okay? The same thing goes for your discussion post. If you have a 10-line response to a question, not particularly well-researched, no references, things like that, uh, that's gonna be a C or a B, okay? Um, meeting all the minimum requirements is gonna get you a B. But if you want to improve on that B, then if you want to increase your grade, you will have to add some depth or breadth to your answers. So what we mean by that is you can either, if you are required to develop a regression model, okay, you can dig further into the regression model, okay? Let's say you are supposed to do a logistic regression model. Can you, uh, we give you a skeleton code, you execute it, you get your answers then you can go read up on uh, the regression-related APIs, uh, read up on all the regression functions in Spark, and try the same regression in a more sophisticated manner, okay? Try several iterations of the regression. Or you can try other methods, methods other than logistic regression, okay? You can try a neural network, or um, you know a decision tree and things like that. So you are exposing in breadth. Okay, so that is what we expect uh, from 
ए विल रिटर्न रिपोर्ट ओके वेन यू आर डिस्कसिंग योर रिजल्ट मेक श्योर यू you clearly explain the terms for example uh, if you are presenting the results of a model uh, i would like to see all the metrics very clearly stated and explain okay what is the what the, what do you mean by recall rate what do you mean by precision what is ppv okay uh, what the, what do you mean by the roc curve okay uh, those kind of things so if we need a good definition good set of definition explanations for the terms and um good interpretation of the results okay um again you have to show some evidence of critical thinking in the analysis um there is always a section uh, devoted to analysis in the uh, report and you must dig in and uh, demonstrate some critical thinking okay and future research or future work uh, is again uh, a section that is uh, required in most assignment reports again here you will have to uh, do some research into what is the current state and what is going to be the future state of the technology you are using for that assignment okay so all of these things uh will be taken into account um yeah, while assigning uh, grades for assignments so um every week you know um if you have already done courses you know this every week uh, get started early read all the required material and then uh, choose at least some of the um uh, other materials listed uh and uh, make sure you watch the lecture and take notes um and uh, uh and then uh, get started with the assignments as soon as possible uh read all the prompts for the discussion posts okay read them thoroughly and try to answer those prompts as many of them as possible you know the prompt questions uh if you have any issue you are free to email us but if it is a general enough issue uh, you should post it on the discussion forum okay um, so that uh, everybody all of your classmates can uh, benefit from that and uh, uh, usually we get back and you know we respond within 24 hours uh, that actually that is the uh, you know that's the upper limit we are um much faster than that uh, on most days all right any questions you can uh, either unmute yourself or you can um, let me see or you can send your questions to everybody i have a question from rachel will we be able to gather data find sources to mine for our assignments via the IBM cloud platform um we will for most of the assignments we will give you data okay because um you know there will be certain parsing uh and transformation that you need to do and we don't want you to spend time um in uh, you know spend time in just the data cleaning and uh, what we call data data munging um and things like that so we have a certain a set of well curated data uh, we will be giving you those but i think um in some assignments you are free to choose your own data uh, i believe in the hbase assignment uh you are free to choose your own data let me uh ask elena to to uh, respond to this elena can you respond to this question to rachel's question yeah 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 absolutely for the age based assignment you have to make up your own problem and, and it doesn't have to be the real data 
as you see, the example, the voxels that you have is, it, it's an original, I just made it up. Okay, let's do the evaluation of the difficulty level of the data analytics courses, right? So it's, it, it's not, I'm not going to, we're not going to go and do the research to validate if, somebody leave on the X street as you specify in the data. But the data has to make sense. I mean, I hope I'm clear on that. Like if you say somebody was five-year-old, okay, let him be five-year-old. I'm not going to go in and validate it. But it has to be something that makes sense. And it could be related to your hobby, something like that for the first assignment. And for the upcoming assignment, there'll be times when we give you the data. It's because we want to make sure that you're working with data suitable for the assignment, and we don't want you to be spending the whole week looking for the data, right? So, well, you'll see. We can stick assignment at a time, right? Yeah. All right. And uh, Jesse, is there a required number of discussions to answer? So, um, almost every week, uh, there will be a required discussion post. Um, you will see it in the course content for that week. Uh, there, there will be a certain number of questions or prompts for your discussion for each week. Okay, sometimes uh, you can pick one, one question. Uh, sometimes you are required to answer all the questions, uh, but it will be made clear to you. Okay, it is uh, listed on the uh, on that week's content. Uh, so yes, there are uh, the I would say the required number of discussions to answer will be approximately equal to uh, the number of weeks, which is twelve. Sometimes we combine uh, two weeks uh, to do want to cover one topic. In that case, you will have only one discussion post. Uh, for that week. Now, if you are asking me uh, how many discussions post you are supposed to do for a week, okay, that's up to you. Okay, you are ex you are expected to post one uh, main uh, essay. Okay, you are supposed to answer the questions and post one main essay, and then you have to engage your classmates. Um, you know, you got to read their posts and comment on them or ask them questions. Um, so that really will uh, contribute a lot towards your uh, grade for the discussion. So the more you participate and the more thoughtful comments you make, the better your grade will be, okay? And um, I will be responding to almost all of your posts. I shouldn't say almost. I'll be responding to all of your posts. And often, if your original essay uh, is a little bit lacking, I would have my own list of questions. And uh, answering them will also boost your grade. OK? All right, any other questions? Will we be able to access the IBM Cloud from different computers? Uh, yes, because it is a cloud. It's the cloud, right? So you oh, should be uh, able to. However, uh, I will let Ellen answer. The, I think there is a Mac versus a Windows issue. Well, not necessarily, but sometimes if, you, if you're using a computer at work, and especially if you're working for the government, federal government clients, uh, some employers could block certain pages. So it's highly possible that you might not be able to access the cloud from your work computer because of your work firewall. So just keep that in yeah. mind. It's possible. Yeah. If you have, uh, if you are using your work laptop or work PC and it has firewall, or if you are connecting through a VPN to your work network, then you may face problems. Okay. Um, in that case, just log out of the uh, VPN and uh, try to connect. Mm -hmm. uh, Jesse is also asking if uh, Mac is compatible for all the tools. Oh, yes. Yeah. Yes. I think, yeah, Elena posts uh, instructions for both Mac and Windows. Uh, yeah, but, 
Uh, but the thing is, if you go in and look at the cloud, if you look at the help page, it tells the requirements. It tells the operating system requirements, the browser requirements. It's all in there. Yeah. You may access, yes, because Mac works, Windows works. Yeah. Uh -huh. yes. I think about one, one third of the students have been using Mac ever since mm -hmm. then. Yeah. Yep. All right. Are there any other questions? Any more questions? Um, you can send it to everybody or just unmute your phone or unmute yourself and talk if you need to. Hey, go to this is Lamesh. Um, just mm -hmm. to uh, mind it, I mean, just to, to mention about the Kaggle competition. So. Uh, folks yeah, that you may have heard about, you know, all the uh, folk, I mean, many of the students participating in in external competitions. So just to get kind of get prepared for, you know, taking or participating in such competitions, we would have our own competition as well. So it's kind of a nice friendly competition within the class, um, and it will be on the Kaggle platform. Um, if many of you already know about it, that it's. It's completely owned by Google, and we are able to have our, you know, our stage our own competition uh, for it. So, and and folks who are not uh, so sure or not have heard about or have never, you know, worked on that platform before, not to worry. Uh, we'll kind of go over. We'll kind of do a quick walk through in the next uh, session, um, next webinar. We'll definitely do that. So, I'll be sending out uh, information to you uh, by the end of this week. So you you'll be able to start working from the second week onwards, and it ends by the the eleventh week. Um, so you get almost roughly around ten weeks to do that. It's a very simple data set. You do want to take advantage of that, you know, a to kind of know about that platform, um, and b to kind of get prepared for you know something that you could do even outside. And and most importantly, I'm, I'm sure Dr. Gopati and Dr. Gorcheva would um, be you know, awarding you an extra credit point. And, and Dr. Kolpati, you can, you can also attest to that or, or confirm that, you know, they would be getting an extra credit point if they, you know, succeed and, and do well in that competition, especially being in the top three in the class. Yes, yes. Um, there is extra credit for um, the uh, participating in the Kaggle competition, and I uh, yeah, strongly recommend you to do that because you never know, you know, at the end of the course, you know, that may make the difference between an A and a B. So, yeah, it's a wonderful opportunity. Please uh, uh, make use of it. Um, I see another question from Jesse. What pro programming language will mostly be used and also how much coding is involved in this class? Um, We'll be mostly using Python. There will also be some R. Um, so, Elena, how do you want to answer the last question? How much coding is involved in this class? Oh, how much coding is involved? Well, that's an excellent question. <laughs> well, the first assignment is mostly like age-based commands. Uh, but let, let me phrase, let me answer a question with a question. Do you like to write the code or not? Is it something that you're interested to do? Because there is no upper limit. Yes. Jesse says yes. Oh, you like to do? Oh, yeah. Then you're going to like, you're going to like assignment too. Because, as we mentioned, there is no upper limit. Well, at least you will have two logistic regression, right? But if you'd like, you can go, you can do the naive base, you can do decision trees. And I have seen a lot of interesting uh, solutions last semester. So yeah, and generally people also um, do some nifty programming for um, preparing the data. You know, transforming and preparing the data, parsing the data, 
I've seen people write their own uh, passing functions and, you know, in, in, a, in a lot of different ways. So there will be a lot of opportunity uh, for you to... Linesh, do you want to answer this question? What programming languages and how much coding is involved? I mean, um, yeah, if, it's, it's, um, you know, just for from a competition perspective, there would not be a lot of, of course, it's going to be based on what you have learned all through in all the different courses here. So whether it's R, but you can definitely work on R or Python, um, or if you want to use any of the tools. Uh, but but the, the most important point is that you should be able to produce that. So one, one of the key criteria is that, that you should be able to produce that code, provide that code to us, you know, once you're done through the competition. But I, I would strongly suggest that you make use of the languages that you've learned and especially that you've learned are throughout, uh, you know, are, there's many of the courses, I would uh, strongly recommend that. And uh, trust me, it is, it isn't really, you know, much of coding. Uh, but having said that, for the other assignments, you're using pretty much the tools, right, IBM. So there is going to be some amount, um, in it, and, and that for that, you will definitely get a lot of hints within the you know, the walkthroughs or the or the code that is already going to be provided to you. So I, I think uh, there should not be much of that. It, there shouldn't be much of challenge here, but there's some amount of challenge, which is good, which will kind of keep you busy and you want to know more, but it's not going to be uh, to a point where, you know, you, you think that this is uh, this course is going to lead to a failure. There's going to be a lot of success um, if, if you, as I said, you know, start on time. Hope that answers the question. Any other questions? Okay. All right. As I said, uh, oh, yeah, there's one more. So we can choose the code. Nancy asks, can we choose the code? Um, are you asking if um, you can choose the programming language? Oh, for the competition, yes, I think. For the competition, yes, but for the assignment, you need you need to use what is asked. Yeah. So for the assignments, we give you a skeleton, and um, oh, okay. She says she not doesn't feel confident with Python. More comfortable with R. Uh, one of our assignments is going to be in R, um, and um, you know there'll be the sentiment analysis. Uh, but uh, you don't have to worry about not being an expert in Python. Uh, you will have, uh, you know, every assignment is going to be preceded by uh, either a tutorial that gives you a complete set of executable codes, or um, you're going to have a notebook which has, um, uh, you know, all the, which has kind of a skeleton code, and you should be able to easily develop upon uh, that skeleton, okay? So I would not worry about it. If you do have time, uh, you know, then, you know, you're welcome to um, uh, brush up on your Python skills, but uh, you should not be scared of uh, the assignments being in Python. And Yelena does an excellent walkthrough before each of the assignments, right? I mean, these right. Yes. For, especially for the tutorial piece, um, there's always a good walkthrough, which is going to, going to be giving you a lot of hints about your actual assignment. So look forward to, you know, and, and attend those walkthrough sessions, which are going to be very, very helpful. Yeah. So yeah, definitely the uh, the yeah. Watch out for the lectures. Don't make, miss the lectures and the, you know the walk out, the walkthrough sessions. Okay. Any other questions? All right then. Um, I think we can uh, wind up. Um, Elena and Linesh, yeah. do you have anything else to add? No, I think it looks like we covered it all. Thank you. Yes, good luck, everybody. We'll have a nice yep, good luck. Yeah. Okay.
Okay, so thank you. Good night. Okay, so yeah. I'm going to stop the recording. Where is it? Okay. Okay.